How the Nasty Dragon Became a Nice Puppy. A story to explain reincarnation to young children. Written by Dick Sutphin, read by Reg Green. Wake up, Hunter. It's time to get dressed for school, said his mother. Hunter opened his eyes, stretched, and said, Mom, I had a really weird dream. Tell me about it, she said, as she took his clothes from a dresser drawer. Well, in the dream I was big, like you and Daddy, but it was a long time ago. I was a man riding in a covered wagon pulled by two horses. What else happened in the dream? Mother asked as she helped him button his shirt. Hunter thought for a moment, trying to remember. A lady and some kids were there, and we camped outside by a river. We had a big campfire because we were afraid of bears. Mother nodded and said, The man in your dream may have been you in another life, Hunter. Maybe the dream was a memory. When Hunter was dressed, they went to the kitchen, and he fixed a bowl of cereal. His mother made toast and poured a glass of orange juice. While Hunter ate, his kitten, Shira sat on the floor under his chair and purred. Thinking again about his dream, Hunter said, You mean I was alive before I was born as your baby, Mom? Oh, yes, you've lived many lifetimes, Mother said. That's kind of weird, Hunter said. It's called reincarnation. Not everybody accepts the idea, but your daddy and I do. We believe that when someone dies, they go to the other side, until they are born again as a little baby. Hunter remembered an uncle who had died. You mean Uncle Jack is going to come back as a baby? Yes, Mother said. But right now it's time for school, young man. Why don't you ask your dad about reincarnation tonight? Hunter went to school and forgot about the dream and reincarnation until after supper when his dad said, Would you like to hear a story about a nasty dragon who became a nice puppy? Sure, Hunter said, climbing up on the couch beside his father, who started to tell this story. Once upon a time there was a nasty old dragon who lived in a cave way up in the mountains. Whenever the dragon was hungry or angry, he would roar and blast fire out of his mouth. The roar was so loud it could be heard in the town at the foot of the mountain, causing the townspeople to tremble in fear, for they knew that the dragon only left his cave for one reason, come down into the town and eat someone. The townspeople called the dragon Fire Spitter. They wanted to get rid of him, but were afraid of being eaten. Then one day, after the dragon had eaten a mayor, the people had a meeting and decided to send for a brave knight. When the knight arrived, the people pleaded, Please get rid of Fire Spitter before he eats us all. The knight listened to their pleas and asked if someone would take him to the dragon's cave. I will, said a young boy. I know where his cave is. I found it while hiking. How do you know it was Fire Spitter's cave? The town sheriff asked. Because there were bones all over the ground by the entrance, the boy said. Please, let me take the knight to the cave. The townspeople were silent. They knew the boy would be in great danger. But someone had to do something. They agreed to let him lead the knight up to the scary cave. The boy's mother and father told him to be very careful. So the next morning, the knight and the boy set off. It took them several hours to get to the dragon's cave. They had to climb over very steep rocks and cut through very dense forests. When they arrived, the knight told the boy to hide behind a rock. Then the knight blew a horn that was so loud it hurt the boy's ears. A moment later, the dragon charged out of the cave entrance. Fire Spitter stopped when he saw the knight. Why are you here? The dragon growled, fire shooting from his mouth. I've come to put an end to you, said the knight. Why would you want to do that? roared the dragon. Because you're a very nasty dragon who eats townspeople. A long growl was followed by a great burst of fire from Fire Spitter's mouth.
The fire didn't quite reach the night. People are there for me to eat, Fire Spitter said. And taking a deep breath, the dragon stepped forward, blowing another burst of fire. The flame roared toward the night, but didn't reach him. Then, as Fire Spitter was taking another deep breath and another step forward, the knight spurred his horse and charged at the dragon, holding up a mirror. When Fire Spitter blew the burst of fire, it hit the mirror and bounced back at the dragon, engulfing the great beast in his own flames. With a great roar, Fire Spitter fell to the ground, dead. With the dragon gone, the townspeople lived happily, no longer fearing for their lives. But was that the end of Fire Spitter? No, it wasn't. No one ever really dies. They just transform and continue to live in the astral planes. Fire Spitter no longer existed in the world we know, but he was doing fine in the astral world. And there he met a man who wanted to talk to him. Aren't you afraid I'll eat you? asked Fire Spitter. No, you can't eat people on the astral plane, said the man in a white robe. But we have to talk about your return to Earth. You mean I can go back to my cave? asked Fire Spitter. No, but you have to go back to Earth so you can continue to learn about right and wrong, said the man. You didn't do too well as a dragon. You could have eaten nuts and berries, but you were nasty and ate people. But people taste good, said Fire Spitter. It was wrong to hurt others, said the man. Because you were so nasty, you're going to have to go back and live with someone who was mean to you. Oh, my, said Fire Spitter. You must learn to treat others as you would like to be treated, said the man. Will I be a dragon again? No. This time you're going to be a horse, said the man, making a note in a big book. A few weeks later, a horse was born on a farm near the town at the foot of the mountains. The townspeople didn't know it was Fire Spitter reincarnated, and no one but his mother paid much attention to him. It wasn't long before he was running around the pasture. He'd kick and jump and whinny, and after a while he forgot all about being a dragon. He was just a young horse named Jumper, who sometimes dreamed about breathing fire. When Jumper was a year old, the farmer sold him to a junk man. The man needed a new horse to pull his junk cart from house to house, collecting trash, which he hauled to the dump. Jumper didn't like pulling the heavy cart, so he bucked and kicked and made it difficult for the junk man to put him in the harness. Whenever the junk man came close, Jumper tried to bite him. In return, the junk man hit Jumper with a whip and refused to give the horse any hay when they returned to the barn late at night. The more Jumper fought the junk man, the worse the man treated him. Soon poor Jumper was just a lump of cuts and bruises and so skinny his ribs stuck out. Once on a rainy spring day, the cart got stuck in the mud, forcing the junk man to unhitch Jumper. When freed, Jumper kicked the junk man and ran away. But the next day, the townspeople found the horse and returned him to junk man, who didn't feed Jumper for a week. That was how it went, year after year. Jumper fought the junk man, and the man punished him. Finally, after many long years of pulling the cart, Jumper was old and tired, and he died in his sleep. Welcome back, Jumper, said the man in white. What happened? Jumper asked. You've crossed over. You're on the astral plane again. You mean I don't have to pull a junk cart anymore? The man shook his head. Do you remember when you were a dragon named Fire Spitter? Jumper thought for a moment. Oh, yes, he said. I used to eat people. I wish I could eat the junk man. That's the wrong attitude, Jumper. Because you were a nasty dragon, 
you had to be born as a horse with a mean master. If you had been nicer to the junk man, he would have been nicer to you. Jumper thought about that. Did you learn anything from the experience? asked the man. I guess I learned not to hurt people. And if I'm nice, maybe the other guy will be nice, Jumper said. Good, said the man. This time I'm going to send you back as a dog. After a few weeks on the astral plane, one morning Jumper opened his eyes to find himself surrounded by puppies. One, two, three, four puppies. When he looked down, he saw that his horse's hooves were now furry little puppy paws. His mother licked him on the head. She gave him milk and nudged him to cuddle up and sleep by her warm body. And when he slept, he dreamed about a dragon eating people and a horse pulling a junk cart. But when he awakened, he forgot about his past lives and played with his brothers and sisters. Together, all the puppies barked and ran and tumbled and dug holes in the dirt and chewed on an old shoe. When he got a little bigger, a boy came and took him away. The boy said, Your name is going to be Woofer. Do you like that? The puppy licked the boy's hand and wanted to say, My name is Jumper. But all he could do was bark. Besides, he didn't mind being called Woofer, especially by a boy who petted him. Woofer and the boy lived on a farm, and they went everywhere together, down to the fishing pond, through the cornfields, and even into the nearby town. One day, while Woofer and the boy were walking down the main street of the town, the dog saw a junk man carrying a can of trash from a house to his horse-drawn cart. For some reason, Woofer wanted to race over and bite the man on the leg. He growled and the fur on his back bristled. But Woofer hesitated, his mind full of confusing thoughts. After careful consideration, he decided, No, I wouldn't want anyone to bite me on the leg, so I'd better not bite the junk man on the leg. He stopped growling, turned away from the junk man, and raced down the street after the boy. Woofer soon forgot about being a dragon or a horse, although he occasionally dreamed about those lifetimes and he lived very happily with the boy for a long, long time. What do you think about the story, Hunter? Dad asked. I'll bet Woofer comes back as a cat like she in his next life, Hunter said. What do you think she was in her last life? Dad asked. Hunter looked at his kitten lying asleep at the end of the couch and thought about the question. Then he said, I'll bet she was a kangaroo. Why do you think so? Dad asked. Because she jumps so good, Hunter said. Dad laughed and hugged Hunter, then picked up his newspaper and began to read. Dad, are people always reincarnated as people? Hunter asked. Yes, Dad said. Why? Hunter said, I wouldn't want to come back as a kitten and eat yucky cat food. <laughs>